everyone, this is Joe with Algo Cleanup, and today I'm going to be discussing the XGov platform and some of the basics as it currently stands. So let's jump straight into this video. So like I previously mentioned, I'm going to be discussing the XGov platform, the basics um, of the platform as it currently stands. I think it's very apparent that this platform will change over time, um, but I just wanted to dispel some of the discrepancies or the misunderstandings that I've read online. I'm um, gonna just kind of give a basic overview of the platform and where you can learn more about this platform. Um, I am going to assume that you're fairly familiar with Algorand and the governance platform. So first, let's just discuss what is the goal of the XGov uh, platform. Um, so the goal is really the program aims to create an expert layer of governors who apply their acumen to funding decisions that align with the foundation's mission of growing the Algorand ecosystem, starting with grant applications. So I think it's very important. This line was pulled directly from the Algorand Foundation XGov uh, webpage. You can see it's this very first line. So they're being very apparent or very clear with what their goal is for this platform. This line in particular, starting with grant applications. You can see that this system is going to evolve. Um, I think it will continue to grow and more responsibility will be given to XGov um, users. And what they indicate as the upside is XGov uh, users can vote on which grant applications get funded. Um, and then the potential downside or the warning, XGov users may lose deposited rewards if their XGov duties aren't fulfilled. The first iteration of the XGov program is launching in Q2 of 2023, which is right now. And it was created with the community participation through the Algorand request for comment process. Um, this initial version of the program, so again, they're really emphasizing that this is just the initial version of the program, aims to test the framework and identify improvements early in the process. So this ARC, so there are two, two measures that really came out of this. This ARC 33, um, it defined the process of how to become an XGov, and we'll discuss that. And then ARC 34, it is the governance proposal process. So this these two measures really enabled um, more decentralization of how grant proposals are put together and presented to the community, and then how they're also voted on. And since they're both, it, it creates a more decentralized version of this because rather than having users submit grant proposals to the foundation, and then the foundation deciding internally what proposals would uh, receive funding and how much funding, this now enables a more decentralized process in the sense that anyone can submit a proposal and then the first filtration system of that proposal, like if it meets all the uh, guidelines, would be these expert governors, those that anyone can join, but those that are really invested in the Algorand ecosystem. The foundation really views this as the next step in Algorand's governance um, path. And they quickly define the process. And again, I just wanna show where I'm getting this information. This information is coming directly from the governance platform where you would actually commit your algos. And so essentially they're saying, to join the XGov program, you would commit your governance rewards. And once those rewards are distributed, they would be sent to a specific XGov wallet. Um, but all you need to do currently is opt in and fulfill your typical governance duties of making sure your wallet balance never falls below your committed amount and making sure that you vote on all proposals. And if you do so correctly, they will send your rewards to a specific XGov wallet, which will act as your voting power. You must participate in a full period of governance, which would be right now. So the first period to become eligible is period seven. And the reason that is, is because you would need to participate in the governance platform. You would need to opt in to be an XGov, and then you would need to fulfill all those duties to actually receive the rewards and be eligible as an XGov. And they also are saying decentralized finance government and governance, which could be folks finance um, or algo fi, but I'm going to mainly focus on folks finance because they have already integrated um, XGov into their platform. So at the start of each governance period, eligible participants would have the opportunity to participate in the XGov process. This would be voting on the proposals and voting how you see fit on what would benefit the community most. To gain voting power as an XGov, the user must commit their algo governance rewards for a year. At the end of period seven, you would receive your rewards, but they would go to a specific wallet and that wallet would be your voting power. And you wouldn't be able to pull the algos from that wallet until 12 months later or four 
uh, consecutive governance periods. All right, so let's jump into the nitty gritty of how do you actually commit. Um, so you're able to become an NX gov um, just through the standard governance platform. So we'll jump to that page right now. So I'm currently on the page where I can change my commitment. Let's go ahead and just change my commitment. I was doing some experimenting before. I'm gonna commit 22 algos. I don't have any LP tokens to commit, but you can see this is just the standard governance platform. The additional step is there is a toggle now to enroll as an XGov. When I click that toggle, a warning message will pop up, essentially stating that this will send your um, rewards to a XGov specific wallet and it will be locked for 12 months. And to unlock or receive those rewards after those 12 months, a full year or four governance periods, you have to fulfill all your XGov duties, which would mean voting on all measures um, and voting with all your power. Um, and so we'll discuss that in just a moment, but essentially, it wants you to be very aware of what you're agreeing to. So we can say, let's enroll as an XGov. I'll commit my algos. A message will pop up on my phone. I'll confirm that. And you will see the commitment go through in just a moment. So now you can see your governance page and you can tell that you're a governor because um, hello, ex governor, you are queued up to be an XGov. At the start of the next governance period, remember to vote and keep your commitment for the period to maintain your eligibility. Come back at the start of the next quarter to connect to the voting tool. See you then. So essentially the voting tool has not been released yet. If I wanted to opt out, I could click opt out and I would have to go through the process again, essentially without toggling the XGov. And I just wanted to show two transactions on what the difference really looks like for a commitment as an XGov and a commitment uh, through the standard governance platform. So this transaction, you can see when I committed through my wallet, I committed one algo and it's very straightforward, just essentially saying I'm committed for this governance period for one algo. But when you look at the transaction for one where I'm opted in as an XGov, you can see there is a beneficiary wallet. And so that beneficiary wallet is the wallet that would act as my um, XGov wallet. Next, I'm gonna show you how to commit to be an XGov through Folks Finance. Um, and I was really impressed with Folks Finance to already have this capability built into their platform um, before the, really before we saw any of these details. Um, so I was very impressed. It's a very simple process. And what's great is you can still participate through Folks Finance in their liquid governance. You can still commit your algo and receive G algo back in a one-to-one -one ratio. And you commit to be an X uh, gov and nothing has really changed. The only difference is they don't offer early claim anymore. And so you can see right here on this bullet point, due to the change in design, early claim in Geologo will no longer be available. Community polls were taken across multiple social media engagements and platforms and participants showed an overwhelming support of XGov integration over early claim features utility, which I full heartedly agree with. Um, but I just, I love that there is so much transparency throughout the Algorand ecosystem. We'll go to folks finance. Um, and I'm already here on this page. So you can see when we go to the Algo Liquid Governance page, I can, with that same wallet, I can say, let's go ahead and commit. And you'll see the screen will pop up. Do you want to be an XGov? I can say, yes, I want to be an XGov. And again, you can see these are similar warning messages that we received when we committed through the uh, standard platform. Essentially, they want to make sure that you're aware of everything that an XGov and their duties entail. So I'll click confirm we can say we want to commit 12 algo. And right now, since we're during, it's during the um, uh, redeem period where you can redeem G algo for algo, I won't actually receive any G algo right now during this specific period, but essentially I would make the commitment and they would inform the foundation through my commitment that yes, they also elected to be an XGov and that any rewards I would receive from doing this would actually go to my XGov wallet. So pretty awesome stuff. And um, I'm making a bit of an assumption here, but I actually assume I could elect to be an XGov through folks finance and the foundation would send that those rewards specifically to my XGov wallet. And then through the standard platform, I could elect not to be an XGov and still receive my governance rewards, which is really interesting. So um, 
I'm still looking for more details. I haven't officially seen that confirmed by an official source. Step two of the XGov um, process is to review a short list of grant applications. So these grant applications can be created by the community members um, through the Algorand request for comment process. The initial version of the program aims to test the framework and identify improvements early in the process. Um, and so you can see this ARC 34, this governance proposal process is really well defined and again, all these sources will be linked um, in the description of this video. And so the life of the proposal, anyone can submit a proposal at any time, half a month after the start of the governance period, proposal submitted, enter the process of review. One month is allocated to the proposal refinement. Proposals will be evaluated and refined by the community in Xcopes. One month is allocated for voting on proposals. The community will vote on proposals that have passed the refinement and temperature check stage. So step three will be voting. Um, since the first voting process will be in period eight, once we actually have some XGov, um, those that opted into the, to the program actually completed the governance um, requirements, you know, never fell below their commitment and voted on all the measures and their rewards are sent to their XGov wallet. They'll then be able to vote in period eight. And I suspect it will actually be done directly through the uh, governance um, platform, the initial one. And so you can see you're queued up to be an ex-governor at the start of the next period. Remember to vote and keep your commitment for this period to maintain your eligibility. Come back at the start of the next quarter to connect to the voting tools. The next bit of the voting process I wanted to cover was to ensure that users understood when they're in ex-gov they need to vote with all the algos that are in their uh, XGov wallet. So remember the rewards are sent to an XGov wallet and we can read about that process again on the Algorand Foundation XGov page. Essentially Alice signs up during the sign up process. She fulfills all her duties as a uh, governor in period seven. At the start of governance period eight, Alice is eligible to receive 50 algos um, and they're deposited into her XGov term one address. Um, and I think it's really important that we start using the vernacular that the foundation is putting forward. So an XGov term is that 12 month period. So period eight, nine, 10, and 11 will be the periods that you need to participate as an XGov and vote on all the measures to receive those 50 algos. Alice receives her 50 voting credits. Voting credits renew at each voting session. So those are the subsequent periods. Um, XGov term one first voting session opens and Alice use 50 votes across three proposals. So what they're describing here, we can go to the ARC 33 uh, page becoming an XGov and we can see under the duty of an XGov, they have to vote with all their algos. So for a hundred algo commitment, a hundred votes are available and they can be spent like this. 50 on proposal A, 20 on proposal B, 30 on proposal C, and then zero on every other proposal. This is really important because you must, as an XGov, use all algos that are available to you and vote on all measures. So that's what they mean by the 50 voting credits. XGov term one first voting session opens and Alice uses 50 votes across three proposals. That's what they mean by that. Alice has done her XGov duty for voting sessions and waits for the next voting session to open. During this time, Alice reviews new proposals on GitHub. XGov term one second voting session opens and Alice uses Alice uses her 50 votes across seven proposals. XGov term one voting set uh, has four voting sessions in total and Alice performs her XGov duties perfectly. So she votes as an ex-governor, as an expert governor across all um, the different periods and uses all 50 voting credits. At the end of XGov term one, Alice withdraws her rewards from her XGov address. Alice understands that if she didn't do her XGov duties, she would have lost the 50 algo reward deposited in the XGov term one contract. Bob and 10 other XGovs didn't fulfill their XGov duties and a thousand algos were left in the XGov term pool. Therefore, Alice has also received her share of the forfeited pool. So that's one additional benefit potentially you could view it as is your APR could um, potentially increase as ex-governors fell out or became ineligible or disqualified. And then that step four is to receive. Um, if you were to be disqualified, you would forfeit your ex-gov rewards, which are the rewards you received from governance period seven. But those are also the same um, 
rewards that enable you to have your voting power as an expert governor. And then it's also worth noting that the XGov process will not utilize tokens or NFTs. There will be no minimum or maximum amount of algo required to participate in the XGov process. In the future, the possibility of node operation being considered as a form of participation and eligibility is being explored and no funds to leave the and no funds need to leave the user's wallet in order to become an XGov. So I hope this video helped make the XGov platform a little less um, confusing, help share some of the really important resources and where you can learn more. Um, and this is just really the first step, but it's a great step towards decentralization and how uh, the Algorand ecosystem funding um, can be more aligned with what the community wants rather than having it centralized with the foundation. So it's a fantastic step. I've been very impressed with the foundation and very impressed with the community rallying around it. I mean, folks finance already integrating it directly into their platform. So it's a really exciting time for Algorand.